Hello, I'm Fred. This is Wood Tools Workshop and you're watching part two in a series on building a metal cutting station. Part one dealt with building a base which has a six inch by four inch protrusion in the back for mounting a support arm and rail. In part two, we're building the arm and rail. The arm is made of a double thickness of three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood, six inches by 14 inches with a section cut out from the bottom and curving around to taper upward to the right side. The curve is formed by a two inch circle centered at two and three thirty seconds from the bottom and five inches from the left. A straight line is cut up from the bottom to the left edge of this circle and then around it. From the top of the circle it tapers to meet the right edge at one and three quarters from the top. I decided to save some plywood by cutting these two pieces out with the tapers facing each other. To have them both perfectly the same, I made a rough cut to separate them and then glued them together before the final cut. The arm also has a shorter piece which has the same shape but measures 6 inches by 10 inches with its circle having a 2.5 inch diameter and centered at 2 and 3 30 seconds from the bottom and 5 and a quarter from the left. Finally attached on either side of the arm are two support blocks which measure two and a quarter by three and five eighths. The arm is attached to the base with two 8 inch carriage bolts that have a 1 half inch diameter so the arm needs two half inch holes through to accommodate the bolts. They need to be perfectly perpendicular to the top of the arm so that it sits perfectly parallel to the base. I started the holes with a Forstner bit so each would have a clean edge then I finished with a half inch by 12 inch bit. I ran into some clamping issues here that got me started thinking about how I could modify my drill table to avoid them next time. Possibly another couple of T-tracks running left to right. Or some bench dog holes. But locating those for maximum usefulness would take some study. This adjustable jig is something I built to hold up a workpiece that won't stay up by itself. It's proven to be quite handy. That's it for the arm. Now it's just waiting for the rail. For the rail I needed hardwood, not plywood, so I chose some 2x red oak. 
It measures one inch by two and a half inches by 18 inches and has a dado running its length on top and bottom to hold quarter inch strips of rosin which will provide smooth sliding for the carriage that runs on the rail. Here I'm evening up the width of the board. It was one eighth thicker at one end so I evened it by setting one end just past the cutters on the jointer and running the board across. I did this in 64 increments until I had it even at both ends. I used a 1 8 round over bit to smooth most of the exposed edges. Even after meticulous measuring to get the dado centered, it's best to turn the board lengthwise so that the same side is facing the fence. This way, if the dado is a millifraction off center, the top and bottom will still line up with each other. The rail is mounted to the support arm with six number eight by one and three quarter inch flathead screws. I drilled through the rail and countersunk the holes for these. This is so the threads won't bite into the rail, but will just pass through and snug it up against the arm. On the outer facing side of the rail at each end, centered vertically and one half inch from the end, there is a quarter inch hole drilled halfway through. This is to hold a one inch metal rod that will serve as a stop at each end to keep the carriage from sliding off. Unlike the screw holes, these holes are not countersunk. We're done shaping the rail. Now it's time to put all the pieces together. The rail needs to be perfectly parallel to the arm. I left it sticking up 3 16ths past the top of the arm all the way down. I planned to epoxy the rosin strips after I had everything fitting, but I left it for last in case any adjustments were needed. I never did glue them in. They're still held in place by friction and a tight fit. So far that hasn't been a problem. Finally, we get to the mounting of the arm on the base. These are one and one eighth inch holes that we drilled in part one. They go five eighths of an inch into the base. They house the washers and hex nuts that go on the carriage bolts, which are holding the arm in place. And we're done with the support arm and rail. In part three, we'll build the assembly that rides on the carriage. We'll mount the grinder to it, check the alignment of the arm, and put the final pieces in place to make our metal cutting station. So here's what you need to do. First, subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the like button, and tell all your friends, neighbors, family, and casual acquaintances to join you in watching part three coming soon. See you then.